Hi everyone, I'm Kara Sundlin and this is Today in Connecticut History. One year ago today on January 21st, 2021, a new, more contagious strain of COVID-19 appeared in our state. Susan Raff had the story of Dunkin' Donuts Park being turned into a vaccine site. Not much has been going on these days at Hartford's Dunkin' Donuts Park, but the stadium will soon be put to good use. The city and the yard goats are using this space for people to get COVID vaccines. We have uh, built this partnership that I think will uh, be one more piece of the puzzle of building an accessible, available vaccination system throughout our community. Right now, the city is focused on Hartford residents, but plans to expand that to those living outside the city. We're very excited to be to help to be the solution and to put it in baseball terms, we're rounding third and heading home. The city's bus service does come to the stadium, but the city is also working on more transportation. They're coordinating with senior centers to start using the city's dial-a-ride program. The city is also going to neighborhoods with mobile clinics. Walgreens is also ramping up its efforts to get more people vaccinated. The pharmacy chain plans to make vaccines available at all of their 9,000 store locations. A corporate spokesperson tells us once COVID-19 vaccines are broadly available, Walgreens will provide online scheduling options through the Walgreens app, similar to how we schedule flu and other routine vaccinations. You will need to make an appointment and you'll be able to schedule both vaccines at the same time. Here at the stadium, we do want to make sure that those that feel the least connected to institutions, but feel connected to our senior centers, feel connected to our senior housing communities, feel connected to the health department because of the work that we do. Five years ago, Governor Daniel Malloy officially declared it Women's March on Washington Day as thousands of people participated in several marches and rallies across the state. Sherry Hardman had the story from Hartford. I'm definitely feeling disappointed. 22-year-old Ari Beish is worried about her future and what might happen to it under a Donald Trump administration. It's one of the reasons she says she showed up at the state capitol in Hartford today. I just graduated from college and to go out and try to like find my way has been has been made even harder now. Young people are listening and they care. Young people, older people and thousands of women hit the streets in Connecticut today to march for women's rights. I'm hoping it'll be a positive input for the United States in general. OK, and I'm hoping that um, everyone will try to work together and be fair about everything that we expect, you know, to be done. I think the issue here now, is that please, we're not treated fairly as women nine, in this country, yet we're the majority in this country. And I think it's important that people realize that it's not just about women's rights, though. It's about equality as a whole um, for all people who are not treated fairly. And they weren't alone at the state capitol. Politicians and men showed up to offer their support. Let us be together. Let us love one another. Let us stand together. Let us protect our great nation. America is as great as its people, and its greatest people are here today. People realizing that uh, by staying, being together and uh, by expressing themselves that they can send a message that uh, if Donald Trump wants to be president of all of us, he's got to take other people into consideration. Those who attended today's rally say it's encouraging to see so many people speaking out. It's amazing. I don't think there were this many people expected. I think there's twice as many as they expected. And I think it's just goes to show how important it is for everybody to start doing something. Nine years ago, a group was recovering remnants of Sandy, the massive storm that tore through the shoreline. It was quite clear once Irene moved away that East Haven's cozy beach was hard hit. This is the wreckage from last year when that August tropical storm barreled into the state. New Haven had bad damage along Long Wharf, Fairfield lost homes, and parts of Milford were also ripped apart. Some Irene victims telling us they are just finishing their repairs from that storm and now have to deal with another threat. And that is today in Connecticut history.